FM. Hello and welcome to a special feature on CNBC TV 18, Nava Karnataka, a state of continuous progress. Now we're going to focus on another sector, a sector which has been facing a lot of pressure, not just for Karnataka, but across the country, the state of agriculture. But here in Karnataka, the government and private players are trying to come together to try and relieve farmers of their distress. And of course, technology is playing a crucial role. Let's take a look at what's really happening in agriculture as far as the state of Karnataka is concerned. In India's eighth largest state, Karnataka, agriculture is the major occupation for a majority of rural population. And to attain overall empowerment of farmers to achieve sustainable livelihood, Karnataka government is ensuring improved productivity, income security through climate resilient technologies, value addition and reform market network. Let's take a look at their course of action. The focus now shifts to the agriculture sector, where with a combination of the use of technology, innovative schemes for farmers, the government has been trying to do its best, but let's talk at length to really understand uh, the state of the sector and what it has planned ahead. I have with me the Minister for Agriculture, Mr. Krishna Bhare Gauda, right here. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank and, you. Uh, Agriculture, I think, has been a challenge, uh, not just at the state level, but also at the central level, because we've seen growth rates dipping, yeah. particularly for the state of Karnataka, and this is a subject very close to your heart that you've been monitoring. Uh, what uh, are the steps that you've been taking to improve productivity, to really bring in that kind of innovative change that Karnataka is so known for? Our chief minister and our government have been more focused on the sources of the problems. For instance, agriculture marketing, is riddled with middlemen, multiple uh, levels of uh, middlemen, who actually siphon a large part of the retail rupee. Hence, a smaller percentage actually reaches farmers, hence farmers make less, and that leads to crisis. So having realized that in, the, in, 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 in our first year of government itself, we brought in market reforms in agriculture marketing. So we introduced online markets. Mm -hmm. We have integrated all agriculture markets into one platform, unified market platform. So we have tried time and again tried to come to the rescue of farmers. So, so this is on the ma uh, on the prices side. Right. Karnataka is a large rain fed agriculture state. Uh, our vulnerability to climate and climate change and droughts is very high. Our exposure is very high. Hmm. So we have realized that unless we do something serious for the rain-fed farmers, the dry land farmers, uh, we will not be able to secure farmers' interests or incomes. So we have come up with a program, Krishi Bhagya, where it's about harvesting the rainwater. And in terms of uh, you know cropping patterns. Uh, is that again something uh, that you are looking at using technology to bring in more hybrid varieties which require less water and in that sense change or shift the agricultural pattern somewhat in the state? So hmm. we are looking at not just uh, water saving crops or uh, uh, methods but we are also looking at low water requiring crops. Crops, correct. So Karnataka is very aggressively pushing moving. the legs towards a, uh, a more climate resilient, climate smart uh, agriculture uh, while looking at conventional crops like paddy and sugarcane but we are also uh, taking a, the lead hmm. in developing this climate smart uh, strategy uh, for future. How do you see the role of uh, private players in the sense uh, when you talk about uh, you know price discovery, uh, the leaning towards certain kinds of crops which have a further market demand. Um, how have you tried to integrate that process, whether it's through technology or through market mechanisms? Uh, we are now look, uh, looking very actively at agri-tech startups. Uh, some of them are app-based uh, service providers who are trying to connect uh, farmers as directly with consumers as possible. Hmm. So I think this uh, various forms of e-commerce portals 
uh, offer a lot of hope mm -hmm. in 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 connecting consumers with farmers and in price discovery and also in efficient movement uh, of goods. Such as your homegrown uh, companies like Big Basket, for instance. Yes, uh, we have uh, worked with established group like groups like Big Basket as well. Hmm. We are connecting Big Basket directly with our farmer groups, hmm. but. There are also startups which are also in that space. So perhaps Karnataka is uh, perhaps the only state which is uh, government is funding agri tech startups. Thank you, uh, Minister, for that comprehensive layout as far as uh, the state of Karnataka is concerned. Clearly, the challenges are many, but I think you are there on a war footing to tackle each and every aspect of it. Thank you and all the very best. Thank you for talking to us. Now let's move on to the part about pharma distress and as we know it's a problem that exists across the board particularly when it comes to the particular issue of price discovery and the state of Karnataka has been at the forefront especially with the, the setting up of what is an online platform for farmers to enable better price discovery. It's called the Rashtriya e-market services. Let's meet with the person who is clearly the architect of REMS, uh, Mr. Manoj Rajan. Thank you so much Mr. Rajan for joining us. Um, as I said, uh, price discovery has always been a bane as far as farmers are concerned because the middleman eats away most of the uh, money. But uh, in Karnataka, you have tried to come up with a very unique and uh, fairly effective solution. Tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, Karnataka has, has really uh, jumped very deep into these agrarian problems of farmer as far as marketing is concerned. Right. It constituted an agriculture market reforms committee to come and study scientifically the problems plaguing the market industry and come out with a set of recommendations. The first recommendation was a single unified traders license enabling trader from one market participate in all the markets of the state. And this is unique to Karnataka. This is the first time such kind of a single unified traders license concept as Breen spoken about and brought about right, right? so this is first recommendation so then mm -hmm. we brought in the unified market platform wherein the trader sitting in any part of the globe with this license can look at the commodities available on each of the markets in Karnataka today we have registered 46 lakh farmers on this platform we mm -hmm. have got their mobile numbers and bank accounts such that we send periodic SMSs to the farmers right. informing at what prices their commodity is being sold and the time when we go on online payment we are in a position to directly transfer their money into their accounts. So this is a truly efficient price discovery mechanism that you've got for the farmer. Karnataka is unique to take out this uh, stakeholder education program in 22,000 villages. We mm. chose few farmers, trained them and they in turn trained the farmers down the line. Right. Let us keep monsoons aside, but market should be the strength and that is what the government of Karnataka is working to see that markets are strength to the farmer rather than being against his interests. I think uh, that effort is well appreciated and one can see the passion with which you are leading this project. Thank you so much uh, Mr. Rajan for joining us and explaining uh, the efforts behind uh, REMS and of course uh, the whole host of online solutions available for farmers. Thank you so much. Thank you. And joining us now on the show is M. Maheshwar Rao, Principal Secretary, Agriculture. Thank you so much, Mr. Rao, for joining us. We were just speaking to the minister a little while earlier, and he was uh, talking about the state of uh, agriculture in Karnataka, which has been under great duress, particularly because of the fact that water has been in scarcity, and we've been seeing droughts for many years now. Uh, how have you been approaching this particular problem? The state has got... Uh, state is one of the largest in terms of uh, arid areas I think after Rajasthan uh, only 35 percent is irrigated and uh, rem that means about 65 lakh hectares of the state uh, has a shortage of or is rain fed. Mm -hmm. Now the best way to go about approaching this is to wean away farmers from water guzzling uh, crops, go in for a little more diversification in crops uh, ask farmers to take up integrated farming systems mm -hmm. which is also something we want to promote. In that context crop insurance is one of the schemes and your state has been at the forefront. Does that uh, provide protection? Have farmers been open to adopting it? Uh, we was one of the states which had a huge uh, enrollment in uh, Kharif and Rabi of 2016-17. Mm -hmm. uh, close to around uh, about 16 plus 10, 26 lakh hectares was taken uh, up for uh, insurance mm -hmm. uh, both in Kharif and Ravi put together. 
one of the issues which we find is that we would like more farmers to get enrolled. We have been slowly targeting an increase from about 7% to 8% coverage. We have reached around 17%. And we hope to uh, increase the proportion of land covered over the next couple of years. So one element is you have crop insurance. The other yes. is, of course, you said changing crop pattern. Yes. Um, when you talk about changing crop pattern, uh, at the same time, does changing the minimum support price for different crops, does that help in encouraging farmers to do the same? How do you actually get farmers to change their crop ma uh, pattern? See, one is uh, we, have, uh, we have started taking a focus on promoting or reducing the risk to farmers in their crop itself. We have introduced a scheme called Krishi Bhagya. Mm. Uh, that is a scheme where you can provide life-saving irrigation to your rain-fed crop. That is when rain comes in, though it comes in discontinuous spells, mm. uh, you can store the water, use micro-irrigation and provide life-saving irrigation. So this has been quite successful, close to about uh, 1,800 crores has been spent. In addition to this, we try to encourage farmers who have taken this to go in for uh, irrigation under protected conditions, which means that you provide a polyhouse to them, so they can go in for high value horticulture. So this pushes or incentivizes the farmer to go in for a different kind of practice than what he was used to most of the time. I know there's a lot more we can talk about, but unfortunately time is of the essence. But Mr. Rao, many thanks and uh, giving us an insight of all the hard work and thought that's going behind pushing this sector towards a higher trajectory of growth. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you us. so much. Bye -bye. So that was Mr. Rao. We'll continue with our discussion and exploration of the agriculture sector and we'll have many more speakers on board. Stay with us. Welcome back. Let's find out a little bit more about the challenges facing the agriculture sector and the innovative solutions that the state is coming up with. And joining us now is uh, Mr. G. Satish, who is the Commissioner of Agriculture. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Uh, we have uh, you know, traversed across the broad breadth of agriculture and its various issues here in Karnataka, the challenges and growth areas, but particularly when it comes to the area of technology and uh, using technology to effectively improve productivity, uh, issues such as uh, water usage. How are you going about it? Priority of Karnataka state is to you know, increase water use efficiency. We have a lot of technologies to bring in water use efficiency. The first and foremost in sugarcane, we are promoting instead of flood irrigation, our objective is to bring 100% sugarcane under micro irrigation systems. Right. Generally when we talk of micro irrigation, it is drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. So the drip irrigation, no doubt it is cost intensive. So there are certain agronomical practices also when farmer want to adopt to drip in sugar cane we prescribe certain minimum spacing, okay. so certain minimum spacing. So wide, wider spacing is the one which we are recommending for sugar cane hand in hand with uh, drip irrigation system. So you said expensive, yes. uh, when it comes to technology initial mm -hmm. adoption is always a bit of a challenge and in this case you are looking at farmers. So yes. how are you going about uh, helping farmers to go ahead and adopt these new technologies? In a way, if we take the uh, issue of uh, drip irrigation in Karnataka, for the last 10 years almost, you know, state government is very actively engaged with uh, drip irrigation systems. We have our partners with uh, major irrigation uh, uh, drip providers. So hand in hand, we want to associate with sugarcane factories also who have direct contact with farmers. So we want to bring in a scenario, synergy between the farmers, sugarcane factories as well as these technology providers. Mm -hmm. So we have specially trained manpower also in the area of uh, you know, uh, going for sugarcane uh, drip irrigation system. And do you give the farmers some subsidy or yes. some capital uh, yes. support? Yes, we, we do give capital support to farmers. In Karnataka we have a policy close to 90% of the capital cost we give subsidy to farmers. Drought has been a persistent problem as the minister was also pointing yeah. out and Karnataka mm. is, has mm. been one of the worst hit. How large a role does technology play in uh, other than the water irrigation and the water systems that you've said? Uh, any other aspects as well that you're looking at? We are advocating to shift the type of cultivation instead of flood irrigation in rice what we are calling in paddy cultivation uh, this Siri method or dry seeded rice technology. So, oh, there see. is technology available. 
advantage of this technology you need not wait for the reservoirs to get full then wait for that protocol of water release and things mm -hmm. like that so whatever little rainfall occurs in those areas farmers you can put it to maximum use farmers can take advantage of that they can take up sowings mm. and they, as and when the monsoon catches up they can have a, have a follow up supportive irrigation kind of thing right so okay. this is one area we want to promote in our command area so that there is farmer need not depend totally on the uh, you know, no, not the uh, not the rain, but mm. the reservoir getting full right. and the water getting released from the reservoirs. Correct. They can start off the cultivation whenever there is a monsoon or rainfall occurs, even though the reservoir is not full. Mm -hmm. Cultivation practices can begin. So, as the crop advances, by that time it is expected there will be some water in the reservoir, so they can make use of that additional water supply and harvest the crop. This is one thing we want to. Uh, you know, work with the farmers, engage right. uh, local communities as well as engage research institutions and have a organic association with our universities so that you know there is a complete uh, approach in educating the farmers and bringing in new technology approaches. Right, this Mr. Satish, I think this is these are very yeah. vital components to help mm -hmm. alleviate farmer distress mm -hmm. and help us understand a little bit more. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining Thank us you. on the show. Thank you. And joining us now on the show is uh, Neeraj Kakkar, co-founder and CEO at Hector Beverages or rather the brand that you and I are more familiar with and that's Paperboard. So, thanks Neeraj for joining us. Uh, Happy to be here. So uh, Neeraj, love your office. Uh, it's so bright and cheerful and that's how your product is as well, yeah. Paperboard. Um, take us through what it's been like, your journey, because you've come all the way here to Bangalore, yeah. leaving behind your hometown uh, in Gurgaon. Yeah. Um, you know, man, many would ask you, why make that trip when you could have set it up right there? The reason for being here is because it's a beautiful state, like it's, a, it's, it's uh, the weather is great, people are uh, very, very nice mm -hmm. and it's very, very conducive for doing the business and the energy for starting up is all over, like it's, it's less, just inspiring to be just being here and doing the things which we do. But you know a majority of entrepreneurs that I speak to, they say they find a lot of comfort in being from there where they are because they know the system, they know the government structure, they know the policy. In that sense, was this new ground or did you find it fairly easy to go about setting up those building blocks? No, no, very, very easy. I think, uh, so we shifted here. Um, uh, uh, so one of our earliest investors is Mr. Narayan Murthy. So I think that's, there was some peg here. So like, mm -hmm. it's not that it's an unknown place. Mm -hmm. So he, he being here, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's some sort of a hallowed ground for us. Like, you know, you right. just want to, it's like our Makkah Medina type, like you <laughs> just want to here, somewhere around this place. Oh, you're competing with the big boys, your own former employer, Coke is a big player in this market along with all the others. Yeah. So, uh, you know, how, how do you sort of play this game when financially you guys have grown quite a bit, but you're still, you know, minuscule compared to the big yeah. players. Yeah. So, are you now in the volume game? Are you still in a very niche space? Where do you take it from here? One of the things which we are probably good at is A, our brand is strong. Like we have built a very strong brand. There's a very strong, deep-rooted Indian ethos. And right. I think uh, I think it will be very, very difficult for a large multinational company to have that connect at the very, very ground level because these are very strong, like deeply rooted in sites essentially right. because you've grown up in a small town doing all of that stuff essentially you're building this brand. Like a brand which originated in probably a foreign country would not have the same connect. Like it's, 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 ah, so you've, think, you've been able to mark your territory yeah, in that yeah, sense. Yeah. Second big mode for us is this product innovation thing, right? Like So we spend a lot of energy behind getting our products right. Uh, Pivot as a brand is like two parts, alive is the contemporary, cool, the brand branding part, but the authentic is the soul of the brand. Mm. So we, when we make our armrests, we are the only company, only company in this world now, mm. like I'm not about India, which is naturally ripening our mango. So, and you do most of your R&D here in Bangalore? So we have three centers of R&D. So mm. we are uh, one in Manesar, where we do the, uh, the drinks and beverages thing. And then there is like one uh, in Mysore, which is there in our plant. Hmm. We will do some uh, more um, uh, edging, edge work around sugarcane. Like we're working a lot around sugarcane. Like can we get sugarcane just to go to market? And the third one is around foods, which is in Bangalore. Oh, I see. And foods, you're launching those, uh, the chickies and... Uh, yeah, correct. Uh, it's like you, so if your goal is to protect these traditional age-old recipes, hmm. then you have to protect the food recipes also. Hmm. And there are so many. Thanks so much, Neeraj. It was wonderful getting to know you, your company. 
uh, this wonderful office that you have and your two dogs, Hector yeah. and Beverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the end of this special feature on agriculture. Do remember to catch the Nava Karnataka Conclave on February the 24th. Until we meet again, thanks for watching. Innovate. Enable.